Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be, as you can see, sitting down because I'm going to be testing a little product that might encourage sitting down, sharing good company, chilling, relaxing, staying snuggy inside, and it is for making raclette. Now, what is raclette? So raclette is a type of cow's milk cheese that comes from Switzerland and its name comes from the French word to scrape. Now raclette is known for its beautiful meltability and is often served on top of cooked potatoes along with pickles or sometimes on toast. A raclette dinner refers to a little event that you may have with your friends. They come over, you share glasses of wine, you melt cheese together, you have it on top of potatoes, you can cook up meats, all using little candle lights or tea lights. Actually, they have electric raclette makers now that you just plug in, and it's kind of like a griddle, and there are individual little pans where you can melt your own cheese. It's a little bit like Hot Pot, this idea of kind of community and sharing food and cooking food together and kind of making it kind of a more drawn out dinner experience where you're just kind of chilling and hanging and cooking and chatting and drinking. So it sounds like a lovely, lovely affair. Today, I'm gonna to be doing this by myself and with you, of course. <laughs> but what I love about this is that I'm going to be cooking over tea lights or candles. Now, this little contraption, which I have not constructed yet, was sent to me by Ken. Ken, thank you so much for thinking of me and for sending this to me. I had not even heard of a raclette dinner before until I started researching this. I have had raclette before, melted and in sandwiches for just beautiful grilled cheese, but I've never actually cooked it over a raclette cooker before, nor have I had it on potatoes. So if you might've seen a couple years ago, there was these kind of viral videos that were going where people were melting half wheels of raclette and then scraping it on toast or scraping it onto potatoes. That's raclette. And that's a different kind of melter, but it's the same idea. The thing I love most about this is that this really doesn't require any electricity. You could just use your candles, have candles on your table and have your friends over and it makes for a really cozy kind of meal. I mean, especially if it's really cold outside. If you're in the Alps and there's snow outside and you need a hat, because it's just so cold, there you go. Okay. So let's do this. Let's make some raclette. But first we have to put this thing together. So this did not include any instructions, but I think it's gonna be pretty straightforward. And of course we've got the little Swiss plus signs here. It even comes with this tiny little spatula. That's go great. And it's wood so it doesn't scratch the nonstick surface. Four little posts here, which is great because we have four corners. Insert this pin through here, line that up. Everything fits together nicely. La 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 I've got four tea lights. I've always wanted to do this. Cook by candlelight. Do 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 like that. Lift this up. Line them up onto the holes. Beautiful. And there we have it, our little cooker. And to build our tray, I'm gonna slide this through here. <laughs> like that, and then put our handle on. Ta-da! We've got ourselves a little frying pan. Now we're gonna put that right on top. Look at that. It's the Emmy 4 burner candle light cooker. So now that we have the, this piece of pear is really, really, Raclette, I got it from the cheese manga. What is a cheese manga? I just got it at a cheese shop. It was not cheap. It was ugh, $30.95 pound. This was $15, this piece of cheese. And raclette, it has a lovely smell. If you love some nice, kind of slightly funky smelling cheese, raclette will get you there. So here's the cheese. This is the raclette. It's kind of semi soft. I'm gonna have a little slice of it right now. Ooh. Great little funkiness, a little sharpness to it. A little barnyardy. Very creamy. Strike anywhere. Strike anywhere. 
okay. Oh, I love the smell of matches. Okay, let's try that again. Let's see if I can do it in just one strike. I love candles, although I don't like scented candles. I am not a fan of scented candles. It's just too strong. The smells just hurt me. If I walk by a candle store, it makes me slightly nauseous. I'm just like, Ooh, those people that work in those shops, props to you. I don't know how you guys do it. You must have superhuman nostril strength olfactory powers, but I love the light that comes from candles. Love it. It's so romantic. It's warm. It's just snuggy. We're going to place the pan right onto the candles and add a little bit of oil since this is the first time I'm using it and smear that around a little bit and kind of absorb the excess with a little bit of paper towel. This is one of my favorite tools. This is my beloved cheese slicer. I love this thing. I found it at a thrift store where I found a lot of my treasures. I find that I like older tools. They're built to last longer and there is a reason why these kinds of designs have stuck around because they work. So this particular one is made by Carlson and Nielsen and it's Swedish and I've had this for years. I love this. I almost use it every day. Whenever we need to slice some cheese, this is what I grab out of the drawer. Slice my cheese, look, and place it right into my cooker. Pick a single layer of cheese. And I'm gonna fold it right into the cooker. Now this is different than fondue. Fondue is a pot of melting cheese that is communal and you dip little pieces of bread and into it. This is individual portions of cheese that you cook and melt yourself rather than having one pot to dip in. But both include cheese and company and a couple drinks if you like. Okay. Yes. Cut my potatoes in half. These are little waxy kind of Yukon gold potatoes. Potatoes are so good. This knife is another thrift store find. Love this. I know it looks all stained and stuff because this is carbon steel, which is really great for sharpening, but it does stain. It does not stainless steel. This is the precursor to stainless steel. Ooh, my cheese is starting to bubble. So I think we're finally at the stage in which our raclette is ready to be poured on the spuds. Well, it's not sliding as nicely as I thought it was going to. Maybe that's why we needed our spatula. All right, here we go. Well, that wasn't as satisfying as I thought it was going to be. Hmm. So while I'm taste testing this, I'm gonna go ahead and cook an egg. Although I didn't see anybody cooking an egg in their raclette maker. I thought, why not? Because Everyone loves a good egg. Here we go. Alrighty, egg, cook away. I'm gonna take this one right here. <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. Eat the lucky moss. So good. Nutty, warm, slightly funky, rich, salty. It's got a really nice stretch to it. And the sharpness that I initially tasted when I had the raclette raw isn't there anymore. After you've heated it up, it doesn't taste so sharp on your tongue. When I say sharp, I mean like when you have sharp cheddar cheese and it kind of has like this piquancy this kind of like intensity, it really mellows out once you've heated it up. It's delicious. Mm-hmm. There's a nice nutty quality to this that reminds me of a, an Emmentaler cheese, which is another Swiss cheese, not surprising, but stronger and just delicious. Mmm. -hmm. The potato offers such a great blank canvas 
to the cheese. So the cheese is definitely the star in terms of flavor, but in terms of texture, really great compliment because you got kind of the chewiness of the cheese and you just got really soft, slightly waxy texture of the potato. But then you've got a little bit of skin in there too, which gives you a little bit more contrast in your mouth. I love potato skins. If you don't like potato skins, then of course peel your potatoes. But I like that little bit of kind of papery wispiness in there. So cheese, potato, let's try some with pickled onion. Mmm. That's so great. The onion is so briny and slightly sweet and offers a really great crunch, but it goes really well with the cheese because the cheese is so rich. And then you've got a little bit of that vinegary kind of boomness to it. Yes. Let's try some gherkin next. I, even though I'm not a huge fan of dill pickles, I know they have their place. Here we go. <laughs> crunchy, crunchy texture again. Some brininess from the vinegar, but the dill is an, such a wonderful complement to the cheese. I think I actually might like the gherkin more than the onion. I don't know. Oh, this is just delicious. So how is my egg doing? One of the things I like about this meal is that it's a very slow meal. You kind of just converse, hang out, chat, munch, wait for your things to cook, but the pace is very slow and relaxed, chill. I love that. I feel like these days we're rushing to get somewhere, doing something else, or trying to do multiple things at one time. You need to, you know? So my egg's just about ready. I put a little bit more cheese on there because cheese, eggs, yeah. And this time I think I'm gonna have it on some bread. Here's some homemade sourdough and it's lunchtime. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna toast this long piece of bread up. I love it when you make grilled cheese and the cheese oozes out from between the pieces of bread and then goes onto your pan and then cooks up and gets all nice and crispy. Frico, I believe, is the Italian term for it and makes kind of like a chip, like a cheese crispy chip. <sighs> so good. It just Not only is it crunchy, but the cheese flavor is intensified. Yeah, that's what happens when you do that to your cheese. <clears throat> Intensifies it. Delish. Butter, toast, best, best, lifelong friends forever. Okay, let's spoochula this onto here. Yeah, that's the consistency of the cheese. More like that. Itadakimasu. Hmm. Yep. Nutty, delicious, funky cheese, along with the rich egg yolk that's beautifully cooked. Not too runny, just enough so it's just makes a mess but doesn't go all over your plate. You've got chewy sourdough bread that's a little bit tangy has a nice chew to it, crispy crunch. <laughs> Yet another reminder that the best things in life are often the simplest. Right? There is the raclette maker. This is how you can cook by candlelight. Big thanks again to Ken for sending me the raclette maker. And let me know down in the comments if you've ever attempted cooking by candlelight. I remember a couple blackouts where I tried to do that with very little success. But let me know your experiences. I wanna hear them. And yeah, please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Doodaloo, take care, bye. Let's do this, shall we? Be quiet. Mm.